So, uh, actually, like, like I told you before, I don't work in a, un in a university. I work in a primary school teacher and uh, more specifically in the sector of special education. Uh, in uh, some way, I'm gonna continue my, my, my last year's pre presentation and I'm gonna present the post education era in Greece. And actually how we were trying and we are still trying to teach in COVID plus schools. Uh, let me see. So I move to the other slide, right? Yeah, I move. So let's start with uh, the previous two years, the education academic years, like I call them, because we were forced uh, to provide a uh, by this teaching learning. Uh, in Greece, and uh, as far as the primary and secondary schools are included, uh, a mixed teaching model was applied uh, by this as, uh, teaching plus traditional in class te uh, teaching. Uh, if we could say it was uh, almost split 50 50. In this year, uh, 2021 22 academic year, uh, the year with, which I call COVID plus academic year, and I'm going to explain later. Uh, why? Uh, only the traditional in-class teaching model was applied. So by distance uh, teaching, the education, the, uh, the, there was only on special occasions. Uh, if, if we could assume it was like a 90 to 10 percent. The bad thing actually uh, is that uh, the COVID heritage was not reclaimed this year. So everything we had done the previous two academic years, uh, this COVID plus year, it, it was like they had never been done. So why is, it, is the COVID plus year? Uh, as you see, as you can see here in the graph, uh, it starts from April, 2021 uh, till uh, late of April of 2022, just uh, about a couple of weeks ago. So as, let me check if I can show you. So you can see all my remark, prob probably the, the green mark. Uh, as you see there, it's around January 2022, the, the new year. And we have a peak of 50,000 cases of COVID plus citizens uh, in Greece. Not, uh, not deaths, just cases, COVID plus cases. It's about uh, the, the, the period in which uh, schools are about to reopen uh, from Christmas vacation. So uh, as I told you, rejoining schools after Christmas vacation, while almost 50,000 people were found positive on COVID on just a day. Uh, also, I have uh, written an article in a, in a national newspaper about this thing. Uh, you can watch it later. So, about the two previous years, 1921, uh, the education and traditional in class model was, uh, like I told you, 50 50 percent. And we start uh, counting from uh, late February 2020 till uh, end of June uh, 2021. It's a, about one and a half academic year. And we have, uh, like you can see, I'm gonna mark it again, about 400,000, uh, 422,456 uh, cases. While only in eight months from uh, the beginning of September, this academic year till uh, a week ago, we had in Greece 2,550,000 uh, uh, cases of COVID plus uh, cases. Uh, one minute, okay, I think we can. Uh, I, I'm gonna just pass it in brief how we, we fought COVID in schools. Uh, the thing that uh, I would like to say is that uh, the two previous academic years, we had uh, lockdown sessions and the uh, uh, students and teachers were coming back to school when open only by, um, by doing a self-test. Uh, while this academic year, we had no lockdown at all, 
we had only in class education and the uh, students and teachers had uh, to do two self tests uh, every week one uh, on monday and one on friday so let's see some pros and cons of uh, this COVID plus academic year let's start from the pros uh, of course, uh, the main advance is that we go back to our classes, uh, both teachers and uh, students. Uh, the socialization was interrupted at last. Uh, kids got back to real life and the virtual world was put on hold, thankfully. Our routine uh, came back, but uh, I'm gonna say that we're not sure about this uh, and I'm gonna explain later why. So uh, did our routine came back? We, we, we are going to check it later. And especially in, in the sector of special education that I teach, uh, teaching went, went better. Like I said uh, before, uh, it was very difficult, very challenging to teach to children with dyslexia or ADHD uh, through a laptop or through a broken screen. So, Let's uh, check out now the cons, the disadvantages of this year. So we, we had constant COVID fear for students, families, teachers, due to the huge dispersion. Like I said before, uh, the, the, there was a period around January and February that in Greece we had around uh, 50,000 uh, positive, uh, positive COVID cases per day. If you think that uh, Greece has about 10 million population, it's a, a huge number for Greece, 50,000 per day. Uh, I say once again, it's COVID plus cases, not deaths. So many students and teachers were absent uh, throughout the, the whole academic year because of uh, being found COVID plus. Also, many students and teachers were absent because they, they were a contact of a COVID plus person not uh, found positive, but they had contacted a COVID plus person. Many parents were keeping their children at home uh, just in case uh, to stay clear of COVID. Uh, classes were empty and the uh, schools, while you were not allowed to turn on uh, education mode, the education is by distance learning. Uh, in paper, everything was fine, of course, for our government, like all governments in the world. Uh, but reality is very different. Uh, also, a very big problem uh, about teachers is that uh, there were too many obligations and tasks that were not co correlated to, to our occupation, to our primary occupation. Bureaucracy uh, became endless, huge. And of course, many quality hours of education were lost because of bureaucracy. So I'm coming back to our routine that came back. So did our routine came back? I'm not so sure, actually. Uh, let's see some possible explanation of no education. Why we had no education by distance teaching and learning this academic year? So first of all, uh, our government needs to show that everything flows normally, like the pre-COVID era. It's about prestige. Uh, also, there are the forthcoming elections that they have to show that everything uh, is going uh, right, literally right. Uh, they need to protect big funds interests, especially in tourism section. So if we had uh, our schools locked down or the whole society on lockdown, so there will be a, that will be a real problem for tourism is a, our, our heavy industry uh, and the sector that uh, a lot of interest, uh, not only national, but, but transnational interest uh, floors every year. Also, uh, in my opinion, it was a way of pushing people to vaccinate because we had a, a lot of uh, protests about uh, against vaccination. Uh, maybe they realized that education was not the same as traditional in class education. Maybe they, they, they realized that they hadn't invested serious money on education. Like we said before about uh, the internet connection, about the hardware, software, or training or teachers training. 
Uh, actually, the big, uh, the big problem was that there, there, there was no money to pay parents so as to take leave from their job. So if they had money to pay parents, probably we would have a, through this academic year, some lockdown or in, in schools, but there were no money. So let's have a look uh, in the bureaucratic daily house that uh, uh, was in uh, Greek schools, in the primary Greek schools. I am going to express four examples. I'm, I'm going to take it in brief. So a typical day in Greek COVID plus school, uh, a class, a school class did not turn on uh, by distance learning unless 50% uh, of the class plus one student were COVID plus found. So almost no class in Greece closed. It was about a, a percentage of 5% of the whole classes or and all schools in Greece that uh, closed this academic year. And I have a brief example that if a class had 20 students and the 10 students were COVID plus, so this class stayed open, which means that uh, 10 students uh, did not attend the classes for at least for a week. Uh, supposedly, there should have been a, a new class for these kids with COVID plus by teachers uh, who were hired for this reason. But actually, this never happened, at least uh, to, to the area that I was teaching, to the province that I was teaching. I don't know about the other cities, but especially in uh, the city that uh, I was working, this did not happen. Also, if a teacher of, of a class was COVID plus, then a new teacher had to be moved immediately to this class. Uh, it was good in theory, actually too good in theory. But it was dysfunctional in reality because we had too many cases on the same time. Imagine that, uh, that there was a week on, on February that there were absent in my school uh, five teachers, and we we were in total eight teachers. So it was more than fifty percent of the school and of the teachers. Uh, and imagine there was no teacher available from other school. So what we did? Just kids did not come to school. And also, we could not go on uh, education because we were not allowed to go because everything in paper was functioning properly. So example number two, the endless bureaucracy on tracking. Uh, this was the worst part because uh, I was assigned as COVID responsible in my school. So a teacher was assigned uh, as COVID responsible and uh, had to do the, the whole of bureaucratic work. So every time there was a COVID plus case, we had to track it down and uh, fill papers. I'm gonna show you the paper uh, in some seconds. Uh, and we had to do this almost every day. Uh, I did, uh, if I remember right, 12 or 13 uh, different cases the whole uh, year. So I had uh, to talk with parents on the phone every day. Uh, many hours uh, i had to explain them what they have to do where they have to go and why their children cannot come to school what should they do actually i, I had no time to teach i was assigned as COVID responsible and i had no time to do my job because i had to do another job a bureaucratic job and this is an example of me in a very small school um, my, my school was uh, 65 children only. Imagine in big schools that they have 300 or 400 students. It will be a house. Uh, actually, I don't want to think about it. This is an example of a tracking form. We had to do this. This is the first part that you write all the names of, of the COVID plus case. And uh, this is the second part that you have to track down all the contacts this person had all the possible contacts uh, in the last 48 hours. So imagine that uh, if a person, uh, if a child uh, was found uh, positive on Sunday morning, I had to do this whole job because uh, <clears throat> Friday till two o'clock, he was at school. So I had to do it. So imagine I was just uh, wishing for my phone to, to ring on, on Sunday after two o'clock. And uh, I remember that, that the day, uh, 
a parent, uh, a mother called me. It was uh, around uh, two, half past 12 in the morning on Sunday. And she told me that uh, her son was COVID plus. And I said, oh my God, not again. <laughs> the whole process only for an hour because if she had called me uh, on two o'clock, then I would do nothing. It's uh, this crazy thing, Greek crazy things. So in example, uh, number three, the strong protocols were dysfunctional. I, I'm gonna focus on students uh, self-tests that uh, they had to do it. They had to bring it every Tuesday and Friday before come to school. They had uh, to declare whether they, they were positive or negative online. Uh, parents had to, to do this and they, they had to bring a ticket. Let's see the, the ticket. This was the ticket, the school card for uh, COVID-19 that the parents, mother or uh, father had to sign just right here, right down. And if they did not, uh, then we could not accept the child in the school. So imagine how, how many times these uh, things came up. A lot of parents that uh, had forgotten to do the self-test or uh, just to sign this paper. And uh, they were right because they want to go to their jobs, but we couldn't accept their child in school. So we had some conflicts, conflicts that we were not responsible for because we were just executing uh, orders, the government orders, orders. But what could you do? Last but not least, but the last for this presentation, uh, teaching in classes without students. Uh, it was uh, almost a, a daily phenomenon in Greek schools. So uh, that's how we come uh, to our routine back. So we had no our routine back actually, because uh, there were a lot of kids uh, absent from uh, school every day. In my school, like I told you, we, we were about uh, 65 uh, students and there were uh, about two weeks during February and March and another two weeks during March that uh, two classes, third and fourth grade, did not come at school for uh, two weeks. Why? Because uh, there was a child COVID plus and parents uh, were really feared about their, their children, about uh, uh, their relatives, about their families, that maybe they get a COVID plus as well. So they did not let the, the, their, their children to come in school. Actually, there was no educational flow. Uh, and this is the fun thing, because with uh, education, by distance learning, uh, maybe it, it was not the best solution, uh, or like I insist, it, it's just a supplement. It, it cannot be the real school, the real education. It can, it can work like supplementary to the traditional education. But the last two years, we had the flow. We, we had a stable flow, even uh, through laptop, even through a smartphone with a broken screen, but we had a, a stable uh, flow. This year, we had not. We didn't have at all. And uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to close this presentation for, with, with, with some proposals for the next day in Greek schools, in, in uh, primary and secondary Greek schools. So uh, as we all uh, know, we wish COVID to vanish immediately. But actually, in my opinion, I think it's not going to vanish so easily. We have to learn uh, to live with it. Maybe it, uh, it's not going to be so harmful to people. Uh, but we have to learn to live with this and we have to learn to live with uh, COVID uh, in our educational communities, in our schools. So we have to easily adapt and be flexible. So our communities should be able to use the COVID heritage. I call it like this because the previous two years we were forced uh, to pass on uh, distance uh, learning and teaching. So we have a heritage uh, that we can use it, but uh, here in Greece, I don't know why we don't use it, because we're not allowed to, to use it. Uh, of course, when there's real need, we can use this uh, heritage. 
Uh, when kids or teachers are COVID plus, they must be given a choice to carry out teaching either in class or online. I think this is something so rational, but maybe too irrational for Greece. I don't know why. Uh, you, I hope you are going to tell me what happened uh, in your countries after uh, this presentation. And I, I really personally hope that the same happened to your country, but I don't think so. <laughs> uh, this will save governmental money uh, and will let all kids participate in educational process. Of course, under the, the right investments, uh, like, like I told before, the internet connection, uh, the hardware, the software, the right training, uh, the funding to the poor families, and all these things. Uh, I'm gonna say one more time that uh, I don't stand for education, uh, and there is no way that education can be seen as permanent, just as supplementary, and when emergency situation occurs. Uh, also, bureaucracy has to be restricted, uh, and that's uh, something uh, I'm, uh, I'm just so positive that uh, uh, bureaucracy has to be eliminated, not only restricted in uh, schools, because you cannot work, you cannot do your job properly. When they ask you to, to fill a thousand of papers just to do an action, then you cannot do your job. The, the, the job that uh, you are supposed to be getting paid to do. Uh, teachers cannot be like octopuses, uh, we know that. Uh, and also, uh, teachers are not to, be, are to benefit children, our students, and not administration. Uh, we are not to benefit uh, the government or, or uh, our superior. We are here in schools to benefit our children, our students. And the last is that um, we have to invest on uh, on really long-term plans, no thrifty plans or no sh short-term plans in education. I know that uh, this uh, sounds like a, an utopia, but if we want really uh, good, uh, I don't find the right word right now in English, uh, uh, education for uh, our future, a bright education, educational future, we have to invest in long-term plans and no to short-term plans. Uh, actually, this was, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I'm really sorry for any words that I did not find or any things in my pronunciation in English. I haven't talked in English for a long time.